Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. We are back to usual scheduling. I'm coming to you today with a video called post-op favorites or surgery favorites or recovery favorites. Very similar to my monthly favorites, but these are items that I have relied on and loved in the last 16 days. I think I'm, what day is it today? <sighs> Thursday. So I am 15, 16, I'm 16 days post-op or maybe 17 days post-op at the time of recording this. You will see I have my notes taped. I've got my compression brow on underneath and I'm in no makeup just because I'm still really scared to put it on. <laughs> I need to take it off if I put it on and I'm just not quite ready to wash my face with that kind of intensity. But anyway, I've got a lot of things that I wanna to talk to you about today, a lot of products, so I don't wanna waste any time. And the one disclaimer I wanna give you before you watch this is if you are going to either be having a rhinoplasty, a septoplasty, a septorhinoplasty, an augmentation, a mastopexy, a reduction, anything in these two regions, I really want you to trust and follow your own surgeon's advice. This is not medical advice. This is just me sharing tips and tricks that helped me. And of course, please take that with a grain of salt. Ask your own surgeon your own questions. And if there's something in here that helps you, great. And if you're not planning on having plastic surgery, that's cool too. I hope you still enjoy the video. <laughs> I'm not going in order of favorite items. I'm just going in order of, I think I'll do nose first and then we'll talk about boobs. The first item that I'm gonna put you on to is the maternity pillow from Amazon. I will link this in the notes. Guys, this pillow has saved my life. When I tell you I was not sleeping, I was not sleeping. I ordered this on day two, it came on day three, and when it came, it changed my entire life. Prior to that, I was sitting on the couch with stacks of pillows, and you do have to keep your head upright when you have a rhinoplasty or a nose job. And so the couch, my couch is so comfy, but it was very soft and had not a lot of support. This pillow made such a difference to the point where I could finally fall asleep properly on the couch. I could also sleep through the night for a little bit longer. Night one and two, I slept on the couch because I couldn't really walk to my bedroom and I knew that I couldn't create the same kind of comfort and upright position in my bed that I could on the couch. But when I got this pillow, I was able to move the pillow from my bed to the couch and I'm still sleeping in it to this day. Naturally, I am actually a tummy sleeper, which is a pain in the ass because whether you get your boobs or your nose done, you have to stay on your back and you have to stay upright for the first seven days with the nose. So this was an absolute game changer. And also it made it comfortable for me to rest on the couch. If I'm sitting in this, it makes my couch 10 times more comfy and just makes it more relaxing and makes my elbows and my arms sit at a good height and this is the best investment. My only regret is I ordered it when I was high on quite a bit of medication and I picked this ugly gray color. I kind of wish I picked the pink one because there's a pink one that you can get. But in saying that, it does the job and without it, I think I would have been really uncomfortable. Next up, we have cotton pads. You know these ones, guys. You use them for skincare and all that other good stuff. However, on the advice of my surgeon, he told me to put these in icy water to relieve my face or to actually freeze them. So that's what I did. I prepared lots of these so that I could rotate them. These are frozen and icing your face is probably the most important thing that you can do post rhinoplasty for the first 24, 48 hours because the swelling is so intense from day one to day three. It gets worse before it gets better. And the swelling will start in your forehead right after surgery. It'll go down to your eyes and then slowly it moves to your cheeks and your chin. You can go back and see my recovery in week one. I look like a chipmunk. <laughs> I also think my bruising was not that bad because I was so diligent with my ice packs. So some other people I saw online froze water in a glove and they had like the hand which they could put the fingers over their eyes like that. 
and that would stop you from wetting the tape that, or the cast that you have on after surgery. So I didn't actually do the glove. I did these instead because I could position them kind of there and there and not get my nose tapes wet. These were a lifesaver and they really, really helped me. You could also freeze other smaller ice packs if you wanted to ice your face down here, but obviously when you are icing as well, be careful and make sure that you're taking breaks because a lot of the time, especially if you're just coming out of surgery, you won't be able to feel the coldness on your skin and you don't want to overdo it with the ice as well. So highly recommend doing something like this and pre-preparing it so that you have it ready to go in the freezer when you come home from surgery. Next up is a humidifier. Now you can probably see the humidifier behind me. I've got my little oil heater there. Behind it is the humidifier. It's this item here. What this does is it keeps the air in the room moist, I'm gonna say. <laughs> and you're probably like, why do you need to keep the air in the room moist? Well, when you have your rhinoplasty, your nose has a lot of either gauze up it or a splint up it. And what that means is you can't really breathe through your nostrils, so you are breathing through your mouth. And the one thing that no one really warned me about was how dry my mouth would get post-surgery. My mouth was horrible. And that was part of the reason I also probably couldn't sleep that much. But as soon as we put the humidifier on, it just changed the air in the room and I was able to sleep through the night a lot better. There are some cheap ones that you can get off of Amazon that I'll link below. And you don't need to do any like essential oils or crazy stuff like that. No, you just need one to keep the air in the room for you at that level where it's easier for you to breathe and hopefully get a better night's sleep. I'm still on the nose. And again, especially with the next products, talk to your own surgeon. This is what my surgeon told me to do. And I found these products to help me the best way. We have saline. So I was advised to clean my incision site. I had stitches around my left nostril and also across that part there. I don't know what that part is. It's like where you're the middle of the nose is. Anyway, I was advised to keep my splint clean, clear of blood and kind of snot and scabs so that it could come out and not cause discomfort when it was removed. To keep that area clean, I used a mix of cotton swabs and cotton pads. Now, I was given very strict instructions not to stick anything up my nostril. You can clean around your nostril, but be very careful not to move the splint or put any pressure up your nose because the worst thing you can do is make your nose bleed while you're trying to recover. So you do have to be quite gentle. And these products were fantastic. And I'm so glad he told me to go and get them before the surgery because I was just prepared and I felt like I knew what I was doing. When I got the splint out, he did advise me that I would have scabs and dried blood very far up my nose, like all up this part. And so he told me to get the FES non-medicated saline spray and not to put that up my nose but just to shoot it up from here and the pressure from that really does get high up and I will tell you if you are thinking about getting a rhinoplasty or you have one booked from week or from day seven into week two and week three you are going to have very dried crusty stuff up your nose it's going to be itchy you can't obviously stick anything up there to pull it out this will loosen it and dislodge it. So I've been told to clean my nose twice a day, which I have been doing. I will use this. And then I was also given some other script prescription ointment to put onto the incision line to hopefully heal the scarring and heal that incision line. But I am definitely Saline's number one fan. <laughs> Stick with me, we're still on the nose. Because your mouth is dry as the Sahara fucking desert, your lips are gonna be as dry as the Sahara desert. So you need a good lip balm. This is my number one holy grail lip balm through recovery. It's the Dermal Therapy, hand on heart. I apply this 20 times a day. My lips, my skin, my entire body has never been so dry as it has been post-surgery, especially my mouth. I did find out probably on like day eight or day nine that you could get a mouth gel that mimics saliva to keep your mouth dry or to keep your mouth moist. 
and it was probably too late for me to do it at that point, but if you are thinking about having a rhinoplasty, I would recommend getting the dry mouth gel so that you can have some relief because the mouth is so dry, I cannot explain it. One other thing I did that helped a lot is I had super dupers, you know, those icy poles, and also when I woke up right after surgery, the nurses were feeding me crushed ice because my mouth was so dry and I was sitting there, I was like, oh my God, I can't move. And she was just spooning me little broken pieces of ice and it was so relieving. So I managed it on ice and icy poles, but you can get dry mouth gel to help you and a lip balm to help you as well. When it then comes to the rest of your face after you've had the rhinoplasty, you can't wash your face while you have the splint on and while you have the cast on. So I was just doing some face wipes and it wasn't until day seven when I got the actual splint and cast off that I started then using this as my daily moisturizer. My skin is so messed up and I will slowly start reintroducing my other products probably towards the end of this weekend because it's looking a lot better than what it was maybe two or three days ago. As I said, it was so, so dry and this helps repair your skin barrier. It's a Cicaplast Balm B5 from La Roche. This product is one I always rely on in winter anyway, but post-surgery, it just has hydrated my skin and started to fix it up because my skin was literally like flaking off. This has been a lifesaver. And while I couldn't wash my face properly, this was a lifesaver. I am thankful now that I am able to wash my face. My nose is not giving me discomfort, so I really gently wash it and I'm just doing moisturizer at the moment. But yeah, next week, I can't wait to bring back my vitamin C, my retinol, and I'm gonna do it slowly, slowly, because I really do miss it. And my skin isn't looking that bad on camera, thankfully, but to me, it feels like sandpaper and it has been so flaky, but these also save the day. All right, stick with me because we are getting there. I've got Arnica tablets up next. I did take these on day one and day two. They are tablets that you put under your tongue and you have to like dissolve. You can also get a topical treatment of Arnica gel, which gets rid of like bruising and swelling. So obviously check with your surgeon. I feel like this did reduce a lot of my bruising and swelling or maybe stop it from getting so worse along with the ice packs. All right, now we are on to the boobs. Now, I did not have a straightforward boob job. I kind of wish I just had implants and I got to carry on. I needed a lift, which is known as a mastopexy. And in a lift, they actually remove your excess skin and they cut away quite a bit of your skin and they do a more, they do more incisions, so more cuts along the boob. So I'm gonna put in a picture of what an anchor incision looks like. This is what I had done. And because of that, I've been under strict instructions with my breast care. So from day one to day seven, I could not touch or take off my bra at all. I also had underneath the bra, a white bandage right across both boobs, like it wrapped all the way around my body. And I had heavy, heavy tape and gauze and whatever else on my nipples and along the stitch line. At my seven day checkup, when he took the splint out of my nose, my surgeon also cut that white bandage off me. He took off all of the gauze, the padding. My nipples and part of my boobs were bleeding in that appointment. Like I looked down, there was so much blood, especially coming from this one. And I was like, oh my God. And there were stitches in there. I don't know if he cut out any stitches. It's kind of a blur to me that appointment now because I was freaking out. He did my nose first and I was hyperventilating on the chair. But I don't know if he cut out the stitches or if they were dissolvable. I actually think they are dissolvable because he pretty much cleaned the area and then immediately taped it up. So over the stitch lines and the incision lines, I've got thicker tape now that is holding it and reinforcing it. And he did say, because I had a lift, I need to do that and I cannot get those tapes wet. And that has kind of obviously impacted my showering and whatnot. But he more or less said, you have to stay in this bra until I see you next, which is the end of August. And you have to be really careful to not exert yourself, lift things, because I do believe when you have a lift, you have to be a bit more careful and your recovery is a little bit more intense. But what I did this week, and you'll see in the vlog, is I ordered myself new compression bras. Now, when I had my surgery, I only had the one bra 
and I wanted to wash it and change it. So I found it from Breast Care Victoria and I just ordered the exact same one. There's the tag and the details on the back so I knew what to order and I'm really happy that I did that. So if you are thinking about having your boobs done, ask your surgeon for two compression bras or make sure you order one when you come out of surgery so that you can then put on another one down the track. Sorry, I feel like I gave you guys too much info about the lift, but I just wanted to mention that because if you're thinking of having your boobs done and you're just getting implants, I believe the aftercare is pretty much like straightforward. But anyway, I also prepared ice packs for my boobs and you're probably like, what did you do? But he told me to put a paper towel into Ziploc bags and to prepare these kind of log type shapes. <laughs> because what happens is when you come out of surgery, you can sit them on top of your chest. You can't put the ice packs onto your nipples or onto anywhere that there is a bandage because you can't wet them. The reason you can't wet your nose or your boobs basically while you have the tape on is that bacteria loves wet and moist locations and you do not want an infection. So I put the ice above here. In the hospital, they told me I could also ice underneath my boobs. Did I do that? No. Did I regret doing that? Yes, because sadly, my bruising was worse underneath my boobs. Like it was black, it was fucked. So I kind of wish I had have done top and bottom. That would be my tip if you're thinking about it. Next up in items I loved and surgery favorites is this little hospital bowl. Now my surgeon actually gave me this and let me take it home, but this just made the cleaning of my boob area and nose area really, really helpful. And the cl only cleaning I really did of my boobs, especially in week, well, the whole time, is with these alcohol swabs. So highly recommend getting a packet of these. And basically I use this to get rid of the drawing on me. So when you go into surgery for your boobs, they will draw all over you because when you lie down on the operating table, they, your boobs will go, gravity takes over, right? So I had drawings literally all across my chest and I still to this day have drawings underneath that I just haven't been able to rub off because it's been too sore. So the alcohol swabs are really great because I could just use it, chuck all my rubbish in here, empty it, and then I would use these to clean this. I use these to clean the scissors when I'm cutting the tape and putting it back onto my nose. My surgeon gave me the tape, so I haven't included that in this video. But if you can get something like this and get some little alcohol swabs, that will make your recovery a lifesaver too. Next up, I am also highlighting my favorite Panadol. It is the mini caps, little mini caps because at the start I was taking Panadol Rapid and have you seen the size of those tablets? The thing that nobody also warned me about is how much medication you were on. Now, I don't know if I was on more medication because I had two surgeries at once, but I was on two lots of antibiotics, two lots of steroids and then Panadol. So there was five or so tablets being taken multiple times a day. The Panadol Rapid works fine, works the same as this, but these are really little to take and they're just easier to digest and I just preferred them. So I got told again from my surgeon and from my anaesthetist that I should do Panadol, not Nurofen. Apparently it had something to do with like bleeding and whatever. So I just stuck with Panadol and I've been taking it literally every day. Today is the first day, touch wood, touch wood that I haven't taken any pain relief. I might still need some Panadol this afternoon because usually the pain either hits me around like three o'clock or as I'm going to bed, but we'll see if I can get through it without it. But I have been loving it. Now, lucky last, and I cannot believe that I am putting this into a video, but a side effect when you go under and when you have surgery, is that you can become constipated from the anesthetic and also from the pain relief. So I actually had to start taking movie coal <laughs> sachets on day five because TMI, I didn't go to the toilet until day five or day six actually after my surgery, which a healthy bowel situation is something that I would like and something that I usually have <laughs> fucking Aladel, but I didn't have that and I was warned by my surgeon. He said, only take the really heavy pain relief because he had prescribed me, I can't remember what the medication was called, but it was like an opioid, very heavy, heavy, strong 
pain relief. It literally said, if you take this, do not drive, like stay home pretty much. I took that, I think only on night two and night three. But a side effect of that is also that it blocks you up. And so before I did take this, I tried to just have pumpkin soup. I even had prune juice and actual prunes, but it wasn't enough to get the systems rolling. I had this on night five, went the next morning like clockwork. So shout out to my girlfriend Jade because she actually told me to get this. And I wish that I kind of had someone else telling me that at the beginning because I probably would have taken it the day I came out of surgery to get the system kind of going. But that's just something to keep in mind and an important part of it. And I guess it is TMI, but I'm trying to be informative and help you guys out and let you know the things that I wish I knew. <laughs> Anyway, I think I will leave it here. I feel like I've gone through everything. Is there anything I'm forgetting that I wish people told me? Mm, the other thing I will say is if you do get your nose done, when you go to your checkup appointment and they take the splint or the gauze out and they retape your nose, take a video of your surgeon retaping your nose because I watch my video every single day and it's great to teach me the skill of taping my nose. And I will also say, take everything you also see online because I did a of research myself too and I know it can be so overwhelming because there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of surgeons out there but take it with a grain of salt like I've seen so many nose taping videos and not one of those tapes their nose the same way that I do and I'm of course going to listen to my own surgeon so I would really recommend you taking all the information that you've got but still asking your own questions and still asking your own surgeon and then still following your own surgeon's advice. A good surgeon will let you ask all the silly questions and will not make you feel stupid for it and will still make you feel comfortable and make you feel knowledgeable going into it, all right? But if you have any questions, please let me know and I will answer them in the comments and I will see you guys tomorrow in the vlog. Thank you again for all your support. Oh, wait, no. Wait, the last thing I wanna talk about, I did my Wordle today and I got it in three goes, but I have been loving brain activities while I've been rotting and healing. So I also recommend that if you're just chilling in recovery, watching my video right now, I hope your surgery went well. Get on, play Wordle, do the spelling bee, do some other brain activities. You'll feel so much better for it. And yeah, maybe watch some of my other videos to keep you company. But guys, I will leave you here. Thank you so much for the support. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.